Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to week eight of our class. Um, hope all of you are doing well. Welcome to all the e-learning students as well. Thank you for uh, tuning in week after week, um, as well as all the online students. Trust you're doing well. Just um, uh, an important announcement before we pray and get started. Um, the assessment, uh, the graded first assessment is up for both uh, the e-learning students as well as the online students. Please ensure that you do it um, for the online students. Uh, the last, the due date is tomorrow. So kindly complete it because post that um, uh, it, it, it would close uh, and you do require the marks of this for your final, um, for your final mark sheet. The e-learning students, it will be put up and uh, you will have time to complete it till the end of the course, till November end. So once you have uh, done the prerequisite of, of, the, of the assessment, then you can get into doing the, the graded assessment. Okay. All right. So let's just start with a word of prayer and uh, we'll quickly move in. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and for your power over our lives. Thank you for sustaining us through the last week. God, even as we move into class and uh, uh, look at different aspects and a, and a different perspective of marriage, we pray, Lord, that you would open our eyes. You would uh, bring us to a place of conviction. You would bring us to a place of aligning ourselves and our lives to your will and your word. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for all the students who are here. Who are listening, who have um, joined in today. Lord, I pray that uh, your grace and your peace works and, and is with each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Okay. Um, so quickly, uh, would anyone like to share what did we, what we covered last week? Anybody would like to share what we covered last week? Yeah. The online students here are not in one classroom, is it? Are you all logging in from your own places? Uh, sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, can you hear? Yeah, yeah I can. Now I can hear. You. Now I can. Hear you. Uh, uh, we are all uh, connected in Anand's uh, laptop and we are just uh, projecting it now. I see. You know, because I can see four or five of you all. I can see Ren, I can see Radha, I can see Nikhil. Uh, so, as I can see. Uh, we connected to the speakers actually, so we are uh, listening. Oh. Okay, okay. All right. No problem. Okay, good. So um, uh, the last week uh, we had done on conflict on resolving conflicts, and we looked at how um, in marriage we are different, and as a result, conflicts do come. So we looked at how, what are healthy patterns of dealing with conflict, what are unhealthy patterns of dealing with conflict, and what are seven steps um, of uh, resolving those conflicts. The first three being something that you do on an individual basis, and the next four something that you do with your spouse. So we looked uh, in detail with that. Okay, Today, we are going to be looking at another element of uh, marriage, which is um, be becoming a team, being a member of, the, of, a, of, a, of a team. So um, marriage in, in, um, you know, in itself uh, is, is team, is a team. Is, it constitutes a team, right? So different things that both a husband and a wife does constitutes a team and that's and they work together as a team oh sorry uh, i'm at uh, page 97 if you're following the virtual the soft the hard copies and 96 on the um sorry 95 i think yeah 95 on the uh on the soft copy um so if you'd like to follow with me please please uh, you could turn to that page okay so um so generally 
uh, I think let's let's probably take some parallels. When we're looking at a team, we're looking at uh, the first examples that come to your mind are probably sports teams, right? Maybe a football team or a cricket team or a or a soccer team or whatever. There is there are teams that you that you um, work with, and that's the best representation that you can see. So what happens? And what is the strength of a team? The strength of the team is that you can depend on one another, um, and uh, because you can depend on one an another, there is a lot of uh, 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 encouragement that comes from that. Or a team uh, together has a certain objective; it has a certain goal. You are maybe you know if you are a, let's say a, a, a sport team, you're working together to play a game well enough to maybe win a trophy or win a match uh, against somebody, right? Or if it's a work team, you have a certain objective in mind that uh, you may want to get out maybe a product, product or a project or you're working towards some cause. So you're all come together uh, using the different skill sets you have and work together in a, as part, part of the team, right? Or uh, in, in anything else, in, in any other area of life, you know, wherever you're working together as a team, there is a certain objective that you have. So similarly, uh, when uh, working in marriage is is the husband and wife constituting a team. So when a team is there, there are many things that actually um, uh, can be can be done in in better ways. Uh, when a team is there, or when there are challenges, that's when you can overcome together as a team. So this chapter, we're going to be looking at different um, aspects of a team. So first of all, we look at what are um, what is the uh, what what is the impact of two people being in a team? What are some um, uh, some ways or some perspectives? Uh, that um, that uh, a team could use or becoming a stronger team and how as a team you can fulfill the purpose of God here on earth okay so let's just look we'll, we'll begin with understanding what is the power of being a team what is the power of two and for that let's just look at Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verses 9 to 12 so I'm on page 94 if somebody could read that Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 to 12. It'll be helpful. Could someone please read that? Anybody? Hello, Pastor. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Two are better off than one because together they can work more effectively. If one of them falls down, the other can help him up. But if someone is alone and falls, it's just too bad because there is no one to help him. If it is cold, two can sleep together and stay warm. But how can you keep warm by yourself? Two people can resist an attack that will defeat one person alone. A rope made of three cords is hard to break. Thank you. Thanks, Ruth. So when you look at this uh, passage, uh, it talks about... <laughs> Sorry, please excuse my dog. Just kindly give me a minute. Okay, sorry for that. Right. So when you're looking at um, um, uh, this passage, it although it doesn't specifically speak about uh, marriage by itself, it talks it it, def it definitely talks about how two people are better off than one. So let's just look at what um, what what is it that we can take as an application from from these verses? Okay, how can we apply? Um, this this uh, uh, 
th these verses or what you find the power of being in in uh, in a team how we can apply it in marriage so let's just look at a uh, at, at one of the uh, at these verses so the first verse is two are better off than one because together they can they can work more effective which means that when there are two people in in a team or when there is a husband and wife together in a family uh, things have a greater impact their things are done much better it is much more efficient there is a lot more of work that can be put in effectively towards this common goal that we were talking about right there could also be a greater measure of uh, success that happens because two people are together. Verse 10, it says, um, when one falls, the other can help him up. So there's always a, another person who's there to support the other person when fallen. Or like in, in uh, clear examples, let's say maybe in practical ways, you know, when one person is sick, the other person takes on maybe probably uh, uh, more responsibilities and duties so that the home keeps running right or when one person is away the other person takes over the job and the the responsibilities of the other so that things are moving in the same effective manner as it did earlier okay verse 11 it says if it is cold two can sleep together and stay warm but how can you keep warm by yourself so basically it's again talking about even when times are difficult you have one another to support and encourage each other right when one is down or one is um, uh, one is um, not not keeping okay or not not in a state or not in a frame um, of mind or not in a in a good space there is support and encouragement when times are challenging it also has of course yes a physical aspect of it you know that when two people are together there's more warmth that's there is more uh, connection and affection that's there and the last one verse 12 Two people can resist an, an attack. So when there are two people in a, in, a, um, in, a, in a team, there is a lot more strength, there is a lot more power uh, in order to bring down um, any kind of challenges that they may be going through. So even when there are attacks and when there are pressures that are there, two people standing together is what really uh, brings about a greater strength and enhanced strength and enhanced power. So that's the power power of two. When we look at Matthew 18, 19 to 20, and this is a very familiar verse that all of us know uh, very clearly, um, is when you're in agreement, when you have come together in prayer, there is a greater power, right? It says when two or three, two of you on earth, agree about anything you pray for it will be done for you by my father in heaven where two or three are gathered in my name uh, i am there with them so it talks about how even in the spiritual uh, uh, aspect of of life when you come together there is greater success in things when you come together in prayer come together as uh, as one and pray so where there are two people the presence of God is there. You're carrying the presence of God. You become a carrier of the presence of God. So here the husband, uh, what, what, when we understand that there is power in two, you intentionally, the husband and the wife, intentionally works on developing that togetherness, coming together as a team in different things, right? Whether it is to do with, uh, with, with spiritual life, whether it's to do with things at the home, whether it is to do with bringing up the children, whether it's uh, having a certain purpose together, whether it's work, whatever it is, two coming together really builds um, and enhances strength and enhances power, enhances success, efficiency. Then there is a lot more of things that gets done as a result um, of two people coming in together. Okay, so uh, we'll just look at uh, um, what does it, what does this, this actually build, or what does this, uh, this help in? So when there is the husband and wife, when when they come in with their, um, with, with their strengths or with, with whatever they offer uh, the this power of togetherness is what 
bears upon their own lives, bears upon their marriage, and bears upon the family. So it has, and as a result, it has greater strength even when they are and then even when they are working individually or, or personally, you know, knowing that there is someone who is there to work alongside with them. When there is uh, when there is this impact that comes, the this this brings about a blessing for the children. It blessing it brings about a blessing for the home. It brings about a blessing for the family because uh, the marriage becomes a place of oneness. It becomes a place of unity and strength. And out of that unity and strength, when children are being nurtured, it be, it is it becomes a whole and a good environment uh, to see uh, the, the family growing, the family in, uh, evolving. So even for children who are growing in a setup like that, it, it, when, when the husband and the wife are together as a team, it becomes a great uh, model for them to look right it becomes an example for them to see of how their parents have worked together <clears throat> with with a kind of love or with the kind with the kind of sacrifice or with the kind of service that they bring about so that so the children are nurtured in this environment and that what that's what kind of gets carried on and lastly what does um, the the husband and wife team what does it help it 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 helps in the purposes of god it helps with serving what um, God has ordained for the for the marriage or for the family, right? So there is an advancement of the kingdom of God um, through the different graces that God has given a husband and wife. So as you know, as as we read in um, uh, 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 Corinthians, that that each of us, being members of a body, we are all given different graces. We're given different gifts so that we can come together. As one body. So similarly, in the ho in the home, the husband and the wife are given different gifts, are given different graces, so that they can serve God's purpose together more effectively, and also help in bringing about God's kingdom through the gifts that God has put and placed in each one of their lives. Okay. Now uh, we'll we we'll look at uh, the next portion, which is uh, what are some of the obstacles or some of the hindrances that uh, uh, keep us keep people from becoming a good team what are hindrances that keep uh, keep uh, keep or uh, maybe in, in this case a marriage or a husband and wife from becoming a good team so if we look at the verse in mark chapter 3 verse 25 it says if a house is divided against itself that house cannot stand when when the house is divided, it cannot stand. Okay, so um, so in in other words, what it says is, if a husband and a wife who are divided, the home or the marriage will not stand. The marriage will break down. The marriage will disintegrate. And um, so we are going to look at what are some of the things that um, keeps the marriage from um, from Keeps uh, keeps the marriage uh, in a place of breaking, especially when there isn't a good sense of oneness that's there. Okay, so the first one, one of the first uh, um, factor is what is what is is self preservation. Now, when what does self preservation mean? Self preservation um, is you know you. So I'm, I'm sure you understand the term preservation, right? Like especially if you make pickles or jam. You're putting some things inside the pickle or the jam so that it doesn't get spoiled, so that it can be of use for a longer period of time. Now, that's what the word preservation means. Now, self-preservation is you are attempting to preserve yourself or, or things that may be important to you or things that you see uh, is needed for you to um, to, to become better, to become greater, or whatever, whatever, whatever things you may have, you take care of building it, take care of working at it with so much of attention that it becomes very focused on you and yourself. So it could be with regard to your career, career, with your finances, with regard to the things that you have, your possessions, with regard to other things that may be pretty special for you. 
So when you spend time and uh, uh, take on a lot more of effort to preserve your own things, to ensure that your own things are going on without really paying attention if the other person, if your spouse is also being helped or if they require require any support, the this becomes uh, an issue for um, for a breaking of of the marriage for the for the team to disintegrate because just there's just one person doing everything to preserve and keep themselves well whereas there is no care or support given to help the other so often this this you would see these in in things where um, it's described as this is mine and uh, or, or, or you know, I'll take care of what is mine, you take care of what is yours. This is yours to do, and this is mine to do. So there is this mine uh, and versus yours kind of an issue that could take that that takes place. Okay. So what is what is important is that the both the husband and the wife sees things as ours rather than as hers or his. Okay, and do the best they can to share everything in common. Now, this is just probably not with things of, not items just in itself, but even, let's say, time. You know, I I have my own space, my own time. Um, I, I have my own uh, energies, my own uh, uh, things that I need to do. Now, yes, all of us need to ensure that we take care of these different things. And it's important to do that. But nevertheless, it shouldn't take up so much of uh, importance that you keep away from seeing what, what importance you need to give to the, other, to the other person. And often we see these in examples of, um, uh, you know, when, when looking after elderly parents, right, where, uh, where Maybe one of the spouses say, "Okay, I look after my family. You look after yours," and uh, uh, or you know, I will do this for my family. I cannot look after yours. Now, to be to be seen, to give importance, and to learn to look everything as common, and so self preservation would basically mean to get away from this mindset of mine and yours, and move it to a mindset of ours that this is something that belongs to us, belongs uh, to us together. So whatever it may be, it may just not be material things, but it could also be factors such as time, energy, sacrifice, support, all of that, right? To to um, be able to not just preserve yourself, but be uh, being a way that you're preserving the team, that as a team, you are looking at how you can work different things in your uh, in your life together. The second one is what well, is selfishness. Now, selfishness is when um, uh, when either one or both of the spouses uh, really look at their own interests instead of what may be beneficial to the larger family. Okay, um, so looking at how they can do things for themselves more. Uh, rather than looking for for what may help the family. Um, now, this again, with ex multiple examples of uh, um, uh, maybe, uh, okay, I'm just, just trying to bring about uh, simpler examples. Maybe someone would like to, you know, especially young families where, they, where you have young children, uh, knowing that young babies or young toddlers may not sleep through the night. And uh, there may be one person, one among the spouses who say, you know, I need my eight to 10 hours of sleep, no matter what, I, I will have to sleep at that point of time. And not really uh, um, concerned about whether the other spouse has been able to sleep or not, right? So it becomes, um, uh, important for the person to keep uh, to keep their sanity or keep their sleep in place and not really giving the importance to what would happen outside right these are very simple examples but you, you could look at even greater examples with regard to work and maybe certain personal ambitions or dreams when what one has around it 
maybe um, you know one person has a great uh, has a has a really strong ambition maybe to study a lot more or you know where, where it has a lot of finances and and selfishly wants uh, those finances to move to that to this to uh, to this person or to the to the dreams or the aspirations of the person not really looking at how much they may be depleting from the other person okay so but it's important that both the husband and the wife learns to give the marriage uh, and the family and the team the place that it deserves, you know, that place of importance. And um, uh, then try and work that those ambitions or those desires, those dreams or those personal interests around them, right? So many, many examples, even in the way that people may um, uh, hone their hobbies, Right, so one person may like certain hobbies, uh, and it may eat into uh, uh, you know support time for the other other uh, spouse or uh, quality time for the other spouse. So all of this uh, brings about this this factor of what could reduce from it from them becoming a good team. Okay, so we looked at self preservation. We looked at selfishness. The third one we're going to look at is competition. Now competition is um, when the, both the husband and the and the wife are are in a constant um, uh, race to do better than each other, okay? And uh, like for example, you know, my husband earns this much, I must earn better, or my husband has got a job in this kind of a company, I must get it somewhere better. I, my my spouse has bought this kind of a vehicle, I want to buy. I want to get it better, right? So this can definitely lead to uh, a, a very unhealthy, um, unhealthy uh, connection with each other, and that in itself breaks the team. So think of it this way: when you're in a team, so suppose you're in a team, you know, especially I mean, cricket is a game that I think most people understand, or most people watch here in India. Um, just for the fact that, let's say, there are two runners you know, in the crease. And if one guy says, hey, you know, I need to get five runs because I'm at the batting position, but doesn't look at the ball, uh, you know, whether it's it's going to strike the wicket or not, what happens? They're putting them, they're putting the entire team in jeopardy, right? Although he may get an extra uh, um, run, but he's putting the entire team in jeopardy with a loss. So uh, it's important to to see each other as a, a teammate and that you all are working towards the same thing um, and uh, you all are moving towards the same thing. So one's victory will also be your victory or one's uh, a defeat will become your defeat, right? So uh, the more that you look at enhancing and building the other person up, your, you yourself are also you're actually building as a team. You all are eventually going up, or you are um, you are you're growing together, and and it also builds for the relationship. Okay, are you all with me up until now? Are we all here? Just a thumbs up or a okay. Thanks, Ben. Okay, anyone else? Anyone else is here? Okay, all right. Okay. So um, let's look at the next one, which is pride. Okay, pride is again another thing that can be very, very uh, debilitating for a team, right? This uh, feeling of uh, uh, I am much better um, than you, or you're not good enough for me, right? So this the sense of uh, feeling like being on a high horse or being a one-up position, that attitude where you're looking down upon the other because they can't do something or they may not have received or got things like the way that you, that how you have, it can bring about a breaking in the team. So it's important to respect one another according to their strength and according to what they bring and not um, uh, not bring about judgment towards their weakness, but supporting <clears throat> through strength their area of weakness. So you're bringing and supporting uh, um, them in in um, 
uh, in their area of weakness. So that's what that's what you're doing. So in order to get rid of that pride, it is to see number one, like how we had seen earlier, that we're all equals. We're all uh, independent. Uh, we're interdependent of each other. Uh, we are co-heirs uh, with Christ. So all of this shows that there is equality in everything. So we walk together as equals, respecting whatever strengths and helping support the weaknesses that we may have. The next one is blaming. Uh, instead of taking responsibility, you're bl blaming. So this is commonly seen, um, you know, and, and I, I think sometimes we may not pay as much attention to it, but that's exactly what happens when, when there are conflicts, when there are problems that happen, um, rather than working together in solving the problem and coming up with the right solutions or, or solutions that work, it, there comes a blame towards one another. Um, you know, the, the fact that, you know, uh, we did this because you said it, or uh, we we are here right now, here today, because you decided that this is how it should be. So that, uh, that damages the togetherness, that damages the oneness. So uh, in, in whatever, when, whenever you're a team, especially look at a sports team, whenever the team is... Uh, you know, a team has lost, the entire team is looked at how they can be helped or they can be supported, right? So you recognize what the faults are together as a team and bring about that change and correction uh, in the team rather than, you know, just focused on one specific person, right? So the blaming, especially in conflicts, can bring about uh, a whole lot, a whole lot of struggles in building that, in building a team. Okay, and the last one is to to be always focused on a problem rather than to find solutions. So um, it is problems have its um, have its uh, uh, importance. You identify what are the problems that are there, but uh, you you do not stick with the problems. You don't do not continue to, you know, just keep circling around the problems, right? Because what what you're doing is you just um, you're just bringing the problem larger to life without actually working on the solution. So when we continue to remain focused on what the problem is and blaming one another, it's because of you, it's because of this or it's because of that, and not coming to, hey, okay, let's keep that aside and let's figure out what is it that we can do to move ahead for a, for a solution together, okay? So finding those solutions is very important. So the, uh, when together, when, when you're in a team, that's what... That's what, uh, when, when we continue to look at the problems, that kind of brings, number one, the motivation or the um, morale of the team. So, uh, and, and as a result, keeps people from, from really solving a problem. But then when we're looking at a solution, when we, when we are setting our minds on focusing on getting a solution, Everyone is involved. Everyone's putting their heads to it. So similarly, within within a team, within a couple team as well, not focusing specifically on the problem, but working together to find the best solutions. So, what are some of the hindrances that we spoke about? We spoke about self-preservation, selfishness, competition, pride, blaming, uh, instead of taking responsibility, and the last one being problem focus instead of finding solutions, okay? Um, so it, it's important to notice this or to understand this because it gives, uh, uh, we need to be aware of what, what we, we could be engaging in without really thinking about it, especially when we are in marriage, we may tend to um, follow through some of this, like for example, when we said about self-preservation, you may see something that's important to you and without a question, without asking yourself a question, you know, 
uh, uh, is this is this something that is needed for me to do now? Is there something that my spouse uh, would like me to pitch in at this point of time? You know, without us being intentional and actually being aware and questioning it, we may not be in a position to understand that this becomes hindrances to becoming that a good team together. Okay. All right. I'm just going to stop briefly for a couple of minutes. Are there any thoughts? Are there any questions? Uh, any comments? Okay. Any thoughts? Okay, it's a fairly, very, very quiet day today. Okay, if there isn't anything, we will move on. Okay, so the next thing that we are going to be looking on is what is it that actually makes a good husband and wife team? What is it that uh, uh, that shows you that a, that a team is good? What are some of the characteristics or what are some of the signs or what are some of the evidences that show you uh, that a team, that, that, a, that a, a husband and wife is a good team together, okay? So let's uh, draw from scripture. Let's just take uh, uh, Psalm 133 verses 1 to 3. Could somebody please read that? Psalm 133 verses 1 to 3. Can somebody read it, please? Hello. Hello. Go ahead, Anthony. Okay. Behold, how good and behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard the beard of Aaron running down on the edge of his garment. Verse 3 is like the dew of Hammon descending upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing life forevermore. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony. Okay, so great. So let's if we if we are to look at this verse, um, we see uh, one of the things that it, you know, there are exclamations in the first verse. It says how wonderful it is, how pleasant for God's people to live together in harmony. So the way that it is put up, oh, how good it is. I think in some other version it says, oh, how good it is, okay, um, when God's people live together in harmony. So this is something that brings God joy. When, pe when God's people are together, living in harmony, it brings uh, joy. It brings, God is pleased with the fact that people live together in harmony. And when he is pleased, what happens? He releases something. He releases his blessing. It says, it is like the precious anointing oil running down from Aaron's head. So God is the one. When he sees unity, he's the one who commands blessing and life. He's the one who commands a blessing to um, to the people there. So he releases. It's like it is like the precious anointing oil. So it it is very. He releases his power. He releases his anointing. He releases the presence of the Holy Spirit to the people in unity. Okay. It is like the dew on Mount Hermon falling on the hills of Zion. That is where the Lord has promised his blessing. So again, the dew. What does dew, dew do? Dew helps to refresh. It helps to bring about a sense of uh, renewal, a sense of newness, right? A sense of revival. So it says wherever there is unity, it's like the dew where it becomes a refreshing place. It becomes a place of renewing. And this is where, and it says, that is where the Lord has promised his blessing 
life that never ends. So where there is unity, there is a blessing, there is anointing, there is refreshing. These are things that's there when people are together. Okay, so it's giving us a context of what happens when uh, when a team is together, when husband and wife are together. So what um, what is what is it that makes two people a good team, a husband and wife a good team? So the first one is when they are actually intentionally and consciously making an event to stay in that unity and harmony right so it's not something that that you know especially when when we, we were looking at the last chapter we were talking about how we're all different uh, because we're all different there are going to be different opinions and ideas and 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 the way that we see the world and the way that uh, we do things in the world but it says when we make effort, when we are intentionally walking in that place of unity and harmony, there is the blessing that comes as it is described in, in these three verses. So you're making that intentional effort. So uh, you're making that intentional effort to probably sacrifice your time or sacrifice maybe you having a good day with your friends outside and say, no, you know, that's a time that I can spend with my family, probably doing things that's important. Or that's, that is a, the effort that you take in stepping down from, um, from probably spending too much on, on a certain thing and looking at the needs of, of the family and, and giving unto that. So it's a, it's a place where you make effort. It's, it's a, it's an intentional, it's a conscious, it's a deliberate choice that you do to make um, to make that effort to stay in unit and ha harmony. What's another way that uh, what is it that makes it makes a team is is when we are able to um, look at each person within the family or within the marriage as a different being, as a different person with their own likes or their own uh, personalities their own strengths, uh, their own um, weaknesses, and begin to respect them for the way that they are or their perspectives and opinions. So the more that you are in a place of respect, you're in a place of acceptance, right? You, you, you tend to accept a lot more things when you respect. So understanding that everyone is not made like you and are, are very different in their in the way that they see life, in the way that they pursue life. So the more that you accept that and understand those differences, you are coming to a place of becoming a good team. The third one is through roles. So when, uh, when there is a clear demarcation and understanding of the roles that each person needs to play, the team works well, right? Like, for example, um, mm, when 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 the husband knows that he being the head of the home may require to take leadership probably of certain things in a, at, at, a, at a certain season uh, maybe financially has to has to probably take up a lot more responsibility because maybe at that season the wife may be uh, taking care of young children or taking care of uh, young babies where the husband uh, picks up on that role and supports uh, either financially or supports, uh, you know, even physically um, to help bring up the baby. That is something that makes makes again brings about a good team. Okay, and uh, these these roles are like we said, you know, it's things that have been defined, but yet coming together and supporting where help is needed, or to be able to. Uh, work together so that they complement one another at the times that there may be a need, at the times that there may be um, challenges that's going on. So they working together so that they could complement one, one another is when the roles, the ro each person's roles are being enhanced. Okay, You also become a good team when you're able to share interests and pursue common goals. Now these these goals could be could be different, you know. Com finding um, things that that both the husband and the wife can work to, to 
towards okay it is to to be able to share that interest or to share that certain goal and to pursue that uh, that interest or that activity whether it be spiritual whether it be something for the family whether it be something to do with recreation uh, any of this to build about a larger purpose of life okay uh, the next is um, to to work together as good teammates especially in different kinds of areas okay one is the communication mm, you you become you become at you you become a good a uh, teammate by actually a good communication by actually committing to speak and discuss and um find ways of how you can deal with uh, challenging situations together okay so communication when you're working together as a teammate you're working to build your communication all right you're also um uh, also also attempting to do things uh, together as a, as a team instead of managing things independently right so you, you know you're you're doing that on all levels whether it be a physical you know that is running a home not leaving it to one person to do or when there is a, a let's say an emotional struggle and just allowing the one person to deal with that emotional struggle or uh, or uh, recreational or work whatever it may be it is to being able to do things together rather than doing it independently okay the next one is to uh be able to uh, um um act to be able to share in the team what may be going wrong okay so sometimes as a as a as a couple there may be certain things that we may be doing that's not enhancing the entire team so to accept that some ideas or some ways in which you're doing certain thing isn't helping and being able to share and accept that there may be certain criticism that could come a certain feedback that comes and not and accepting it for the for the bigger good of the entire team rather than taking it as a very as as a personal attack like for example you know let's say a husband and wife looking after children maybe one of the spouses comes and tells the other one said you know we should probably spend more time with the children rather than sitting on the phone i'm just giving an example right rather than sitting on the phone or rather than pursuing your own uh, personal uh, um, time of uh, leisure you know spending more time so it, it, it is important as a team you accept that that feedback and that critic has come rather than feeling a sense of being hurt or rejected because of what was what 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 was told to you okay um the next one is not being defensive that is when a feedback is brought the common thing that happens is you tend to defend your position and say no i didn't do this or deflect your position which means you know okay you're pointing a finger back to me i'm pointing three fingers back to you what about you what how the number of times that you've been uh you've been doing things so it's it's more defensive on the way that you're approaching challenges that come about okay yeah? but when you're not defensive and accept your perspective then the team in itself also grows okay um okay i think i'll stop here for now and uh, we'll go in for a break we'll take a break for uh 10 11 minutes it's 10:49 and we will return back at 11:00 o'clock